Mr. Thompson, what do you worry about in the event of no deal? So you asked about people, but people, the impact on people. Yeah. But clearly, our focus is very much mostly on business customers. Well, I include businesses among. So the I, go, I go that way. So our, our biggest concern about our business customers is readiness and awareness for day one no deal. Yep. Uh, for three reasons. What really one is because there is ongoing policy uncertainty about what, whether we're going to get a deal or not, and whether therefore they need to do something um, or not. And the outcome of the white paper fundamentally affects the economy very differently than day one, no deal, and I can expand on that if you want me to. The second reason is because there's been limited engagement with the 145,000 intra-EU traders. We've written to all of them, but we said we're making you aware, but you don't need to do anything at the moment. And then we believe there's a further 100,000 intra-EU traders who we do, are not aware of because they do not need in any way to tell us that they're conducting intra-EU trade. Have you had many responses to that letter or email that you've sent saying, well, how would I find out what I would need to do if we end up with no deal? What is this form I would have to fill in that I've never had to fill in before? Almost none, surprisingly. We, we anticipated that, that between 6 and 10 percent of would, would, would contact us. It's been less than 1 percent. So you've no idea whether that's because they've already worked out what it is they will have to do or they're hoping that it doesn't happen? It could be either of those. Well, it could. But, so you, you're not able to make an assessment, obviously, as to the degree of preparedness on their part to cope with what would be required? Well, our, our assessment is that this is a red-rated risk. Red. Fine. Uh, okay, there, are well, two, that... there are two others, which I guess you might want to get to at some other point, um, but that is one of our three red-rated risks, which is will customers, in the event of day one, no deal, uh, and I think it's worth at least one of us recording that that is not the government's preferred outcome of this process. Um, that that uh, sorry that customers being able to do that is is, is clearly a significant issue. Okay, that's very helpful. And CM, just from your point of view. Yeah, <clears throat> well, from a sort of um, sort of cabinet office and and the sort of network of NEDs, we've been have been talking about the preparedness since the referendum result, and this has been the theme of the last two years and, our, and the NED community has been very actively involved. I think in terms of specifically answering your question, Chair, the impact on people is, is generally difficult to predict at this moment because even in the no deal scenario, there will still be reactions from the other side, as it were, and until you know precisely your point about Calais, but this goes in all other areas, until you know what may be a, a mixture of bare bones, bilats, various other arrangements are made, it genuinely is very difficult to uh, pre predict. What we can say is that once we start seeing that pattern emerge and we know where the issue list is, then you can move quite quickly to start saying, well, what can we do from our end? But this isn't us, uh, either the government, civil service or anyone else, saying single-handedly we will be able to, to work this out. So we have to see the shape of the reaction as well as um, the, the no deal. But there is a very long list of areas and I think a, a good understanding from what I've seen from the Cabinet Office um, supervision of this of, of where the issues will arise and therefore where we prioritise. So we will, we will have to react very quickly once we start seeing the shape of those right. other actions. Do you incidentally, I mean Mr Thompson referred to, I think you said three red areas, one which you spoke about. Do you happen to know how many reds there are across all of the departments? Um, there's a fairly spectacularly long list of, of uh, risks. I mean, if you, you can approach but, how, it, but do you know how many of them are red? If they've all got the same colour coding system? They don't have. So, depart, this is one of the aspects of departmental ah. government. So, there is a, is a departmental assignment of, of rating. Um, there is the network of uh, audit committees, which is um, ch typically chaired by a, a NED. So, we do see that, and, and the network does meet to discuss those. But if they don't have a common system for rating it, doesn't it make it rather difficult for those who are overseeing the process to work out what they should be worried about in supervising what the departments are up to? I think it's very, it is very much the, the decision on, on the rating in, in the department and the conversation at the, at the relevant department board, okay. that is entirely consistent because within the department is consistent. Right. Very briefly, Mr. Thompson. So, um, what happens is departments produce a monthly report that is then collated by the Department for Exit and the European Union so that uh, an overall view of across Whitehall is, is uh, put together by DEX EU, and then that goes into uh, corporate ministers in the, in the Cabinet Office or to DEX EU. Okay, very helpful.